South Georgia is an island in the Southern Atlantic Ocean, more or less in the middle of nowhere. It is remote and inhospitable, but not insignificant, as South Georgia is 165 kilometers long and 35 kilometers at its widest point. Mount Paget at 2,935 meters is the highest mountain on British soil if British Antarctic territory, which is not recognized by most countries, is discounted. Around 700 kilometers further south of South Georgia lie the South Sandwich Islands and 1,300 kilometers to the west are the Falkland Islands. In 1982, South Georgia and the South Sandwich Islands were then part of the Falkland Islands dependencies, all of which were British territory claimed by Argentina. I have prepared a separate video looking at the different claims. A minor dispute in South Georgia is often portrayed as being the spark that started the Falklands War. In this video I shall recall what I remember of the incident from a perspective of 40 years. Towards the end of 1981, a 37-year-old Argentinian scrap merchant dealer, Constantino Davidov, visited the British Embassy in Buenos Aires, where he spoke to the person who dealt with issues related to the Falkland Islands. He had already signed a deal worth $270,000 with Christian Salveson, the British owners of three derelict whaling stations, to dismantle them. The whaling stations were located at Leith, 32 kilometers from Grit Viken on South Georgia. After signing the contract, he went back to the British ambassador to ask if there was anything else he need to do. As far as he was concerned, it was an interesting business opportunity. At the same time, Hawks within the Argentinian Navy, seeking an opportunity to a spot of land grabbing, sought to facilitate his movements. Now we need to go back in time and have another look at geography. The South Sandwich Islands are located to the south of South Georgia. On the 25th of January 1955, the Argentinian Navy established what it called a scientific station for use in the summer called Teniente Esquivel at Ferguson Bay on the southeastern coast of the island of Thule. The following January, there was a volcanic eruption on what came to be called Mount Holdgate on the neighboring Cook Island to the east, and so the station was evacuated and not re-established. In 1976, the Navy once more attempted a sovereignty provocation by establishing what it called a scientific station, although it might also be called a military base on Thule Island called Corbeta, Uruguay. This was located at Port Faraday on the southeast coast of the island. After a time, the British discovered the presence of the Argentine base but chose to ignore it, which in the circumstances was probably not a good policy and had something been done at this time, then the following events might have been avoided. Constantino Davidov obtained the use of an Argentine naval icebreaker, the Almirante Irisa, to get him to South Georgia. The British authorities were not notified of the journey until a ship had sailed, during its voyage, it did not respond to radio messages and it did not report landing to the British Scientific Station in Grit Viken, the capital of South Georgia, as was required. The head of the scientific delegation, who also acted as the island's magistrate and probably a number of other jobs as well, given that there was only a handful of people there, went to investigate. On arrival at Leith Harbour, he found a wall which had been defaced by graffiti reading Las Malvinas son Argentinas. Davidoff went home and shortly returned to South Georgia on board the Bahia Buen Suceso. On the 16th of March 1982, he landed once more in South Georgia. 
Once more, he failed to communicate during the journey, maintaining radio silence, and did not inform the authorities on South Georgia that he had arrived. Some of the scientists from the British Antarctic Survey went to investigate after hearing gunshots. This shooting was probably the Argentinians hunting reindeer, which had been introduced by Norwegian whalers in 1911, although it's also been reported as being firing a volley into the air once the Argentinian flag was raised. The scientists from the British Antarctic Survey came across around 50 people loitering around, some in military uniform, some wearing civilian clothes, and an Argentinian flag had been erected on a pole. British signs warning against illegal entry had been defaced and scattered upon the floor. A building holding supplies for the British Antarctic Survey had been broken into and the content stolen. This was reported to the British authorities in Port Stanley in the Falkland Islands and the Governor Rex Hunt requested the Argentinians leave, taking their flag with them. To make sure they left, 24 Royal Marines were sent on the icebreaker HMS Endurance from the Falkland Islands. Whereas the British government had earlier turned a blind eye to the so-called scientific station on Thule, this issue was now raised to national level. The British Foreign Office summoned the Argentine ambassador to 10 Downing Street, the home and office of the British Prime Minister, and instructed the British ambassador in Buenos Aires, Anthony Williams, to make a strong complaint. The Argentine government apologised for the inconvenience and on the 22nd of March 1982, the Bahia Buen Successor departed with what appeared to be everyone on board and the flag, although I believe they did not replace the food they had stolen. Endurance then returned to the Falkland Islands. However, 39 Argentinians seemed to have missed the boat. They were discovered by the British Antarctic Survey at Leith on South Georgia, so the endurance was ordered back to the island. The response of the Argentinian government was to send some marines on the ARA Bahia Paraiso to protect their people who had apparently left. ARA means Armada de la Republica Argentina. So it's the Argentinian Navy. This ship left Argentina on the 24th of March 1982. At the same time, the ARA Drummond and ARA Granville were also ordered to take up position between South Georgia and the Falkland Islands. These ships were heavily armed, each possessing four Exocet naval missiles and 100mm cannon amongst many other weapons. Their job can only have been to stop the Endurance. The Endurance was armed only with two Urklian 20mm cannon. This would have been no match for the missiles on the Argentinian vessels. This was now an escalation. There can be no doubt that the military dictatorship in Argentina had plans to invade the Falkland Islands. By March 1982, with major protests at home and an economy in tatters, it sought some way to make cheap political points. The incident on South Georgia cannot therefore have been planned, or if it was, then it did not work out the way that it was designed to work out. The last thing the Junta wanted was for the British government to send military assets to the South Atlantic, as had been done only six years earlier, when it had made noises about an attack on the Falkland Islands. British submarines were more than a match for anything the Argentinian Navy had to offer, the situation was escalating. It was at this point that the Junta decided to bring forward their existing plans to invade the Falkland Islands. Had they stopped this incident on South Georgia and attacked later, they might have got away with it. The Endurance was due to be decommissioned on the 15th of April 1982 as per the Naval White Paper of the previous year. 
This was a cost-cutting measure which the Argentinian Navy knew about. Other ships, which were later participated in the Falklands conflict, were also due to be taken out of service. Furthermore, the weather would get much worse. Had they waited two months until the middle of the Antarctic winter, then it would have been much more difficult for the British to recapture the islands. The decision to attack the Falkland Islands was made on the 26th of March 1982. Leave was cancelled, troops not already in barracks were ordered to report. British intelligence knew that the Argentine fleet had set sail and the Royal Navy was placed on standby. On the 29th of March 1982, the British took the decision to send the Fort Austin to the South Atlantic. The Fort Austin was a supply ship and this would have permitted Endurance to remain at sea. Two submarines, HMS Spartan and HMS Splendid, were also sent south. The garrison of the Falkland Islands was also due to be replaced. This was done by sending troops south via Uruguay. The existing garrison was not sent home but remained in place as it happened all were captured on the first day of the invasion. In 1976, a show of force by the British government was enough to make the Argentinian junta back down. This was what the British government once more expected in 1982, but it was not to be. Argentina invaded and captured the Falkland Islands on the 2nd of April 1982 and South Georgia the following day. Constantino Davidov is still alive and as far as I'm aware is running his scrap metal business in Buenos Aires. He wanted to sue the British government over the loss of business on his South Georgia contract, although I can't understand under what grounds and in what jurisdiction. He claims he knew nothing of the invasion plans of the Falkland Islands, which is probably true. He claimed that no Argentine flag was erected on South Georgia, which is not borne out by photographic evidence, so of course he may claim he didn't see it. Furthermore, he failed to respond to radio messages to his ships and he landed people illegally on South Georgia. So I find his claims of innocence in general somewhat hard to believe. For the 30th anniversary of the Falklands War, uh, in 2012, I put up a day-by-day -day account on my history page on Facebook. For what is now the 40th anniversary, I shall repeat some of those accounts on this YouTube channel. And so, if you'd like to know more, then please subscribe. Of course, what I'm doing now will be in a little bit more detail, but it won't be a daily account. It will just take certain incidents. I hope you found this interesting and thanks for listening.